everyone, Pam Gregory, astrologer. I'm going to be speaking to you today about the second half of November and the full moon that we have coming up on the 22nd in Gemini. Now really the whole of November is quite a busy, fast-moving, changeable period astrologically. <clears throat> on the 6th of the month we had the uh, transiting nodal axis retrograding from Leo Aquarius back into Cancer Capricorn for the next 18 months and I spoke about that in the last video. On the same day we had Uranus moving retrograde into Aries and on the 8th of the month we had Jupiter uh, moving forwards into Sagittarius, its own sign, for the next year. In addition to that, so that's quite a lot of big shifts happening astrologically, but in addition to that, on the 16th month, we have Mars moving into Pisces, and on that same day, the 16th, Venus, which has been retrograde at 25 of Libra, then moves direct. At the same time, Mercury, which has been direct, moves retrograde at 13 of Sagittarius. So um, Mars is changing signs and Venus and Mercury are changing directions. So if you have a particularly important decision to make, I just give yourself a little bit of time, a couple of days to either side of the 16th, because you may be changing your views, you may be changing your feelings about things round about that time. So overall, a very busy, changeable time and that really continues through with this um, aspect we have, this T-square we have of Uranus squaring this nodal axis. As I say it was exact on the 6th but it continues really quite tightly until the end of the year. And what this is about, our, our, the, the transiting nodal axis is about our collective future development, our collective evolution. And when Uranus is in this tight square to that axis, it can mean that our evolution doesn't progress in a smooth, gradual, linear way because Uranus is never that. It progresses in quantum leaps, in shocks and surprises and opportunities coming out of the blue, in new innovation, um, sorry, innovation, and, and often by young people, that's represented by, by Uranus too. It also very much describes this uplifting consciousness that we're getting. Remember, Uranus is the high octave of Mercury. It's this, this higher level, this super conscious that we become in contact with more easily. So it is really speaking of this opening up and this, this lifting of consciousness, this shifting of consciousness, which we're seeing at the moment in a bigger and bigger way across the world. Also, all through November, this isn't just a T-square, in fact, with Uranus squaring the nodal axis. It's, it's a cardinal grand cross because Uranus is opposing Venus and both Uranus, Venus and the nodes are now in cardinal signs, the last couple of degrees of the cardinal signs. So this is more um, about either currency fluctuations, Venus's currency in aspect to Uranus can bring quite big swings in currencies, but it's also personally about relationships. Venus is in Libra and that wants to be in relationship and to share, whereas Uranus wants freedom. Don't fence me in. So there could be a swing if you have any relationship planets in your natal chart at the last couple of degrees of any of the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, of do I want to be close in relationship or do I want to be free? Another important aspect which we have from the 17th to the 22nd of the month is Jupiter is square to Mars. Now Jupiter as we know has just entered Sagittarius early couple of degrees and it's squaring Mars which has just entered Pisces on the 16th so they're squaring each other. Now this is highly idealistic. It's wonderful for campaigning. Mars Jupiter aspects like to to really campaign, to have a cause, to have something greater than self to fight for. And sometimes it's around a belief system or a religion, that's the Sagittarius side, but it can be something quite devotional, quite spiritual. It can be 
fighting for for more compassion for people, more kindness in some way, or or fighting inequality. So it can have a very um, great sense of principle and um, integrity in it. But just sometimes, because of the enthusiasm of Jupiter and Sagittarius, and 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 at times Pisces can't be, it isn't always the most discriminating sign that you can you can kind of jump before you really weigh the pros and cons and think through the consequences. You know, you can go off to the Crusades, you can be fighting for your cause uh, without fully assessing um, the cause itself. So just be very, very clear all through this second half of November. I want, I'd like you to be really, really clear <laughs> on, on what you're doing because there are going to be certain influences that are going to be um, working in an opposite direction to that, if you like. Now that Jupiter-Mars square is running into the full moon. The full moon happens at zero of Gemini, 52 minutes. It happens on the 22nd of the month at 9.39 p.m. Pacific and 5.39 a.m. the next day, UK time. So this full moon is very interesting because it begins a series of five full moons, which are all at the zero degrees of their signs. And then in April, the sixth one coming up is at 29 degrees of its sign. So zero and 29 degrees, as I mentioned last time, are, the, are the, what, what are called the critical degrees. That They're pivotal. They, we, we turn our destiny to some extent um, when we have aspects at these degrees. So this really, for me, is one of the things that suggests a new beginning. There are others too, which I'll mention um, later on, but this is one of the, the big things that suggests this, this shift. A new episode, if you like, for humanity. So, Gemini is to do with communication. It's also to do with our thinking. It's to do with our self-talk. And this is a really good time to catch your self-talk. Do you tend to run unconsciously on negative thinking all day long? Because that's going to affect your emotional state and the frequency that you're broadcasting. So if you're broadcasting a less positive frequency, you're going to attract less positive experiences and events into your life. So this is a really good time to, to start to become more aware of your thinking and your speaking. You know, speak with, with truth and speak with purity if you can. Very good time to be thinking in that way. Now, at this full moon, we have eight planets in mutable signs. And I'll explain what mutable is in a moment. We have the Sun, Mercury and Jupiter in Sagittarius. We have the Moon in Gemini and we have Mars, Neptune and Chiron in Pisces. All mutable signs. Now, mutable is uh, means chameleon-like highly adaptable, highly flexible, highly reactive, um, can see things from oblique points of view. So this is fantastic for creativity because, you know, again, you can see things from different angles, but it tends to be more reactive energy. And when you have a lot of mutability like this, there's a slight feeling of, a, of impulsivity or, or a lack of control or a lack of focus because this really, uh, where we have a lot of um, mutability or planets in mutable signs, makes things more divergent. Your thinking tends to be more divergent and creative rather than convergent and precise. And I think this is getting to one of the, the main themes of what this full moon is about. So let's break it down a little bit. So at this full moon, the moon is in Gemini, zero of Gemini, directly opposing the sun, which is conjunct Jupiter at three degrees of Sagittarius. Jupiter is also conjunct Mercury, quite widely, but nevertheless conjunct Mercury, the ruler of Gemini. But it's retrograde. Now, retrograde isn't a big deal. I was born with Mercury retrograde, but it just means that you have to think things through a little more thoroughly and clearly. It actually, when you have it in your natal chart, as I do, I think it is a huge benefit because it contributes to contemplation, maybe deeper thinking about things. And I actually feel it's benefited my thinking a great deal, especially as it's in Aries and can jump too quickly. So I, it's a benefit. But where it's here at this full moon, 
we just have to think a little more carefully about things before we jump. But it's conjunct Jupiter and Jupiter expands. Now this can be fabulous for big ideas and bigger horizons and imagining um, visions for the future because Jupiter is very visionary and future oriented, but it can it can unbalance um, thinking sometimes. It can expand and therefore distort and exaggerate. Very much uh, an aspect of exaggeration. In addition, Mercury is square to Neptune. Now again, this is fabulous for um, imagination, creativity, being dreamy in your head. It isn't great for precision as I mentioned. So if you've got to do your, your financial, <laughs> financial books year-end or whatever, um, just wait until all this mutability moves on because you can be a little too, too creative with it. So with, these, um, with the full moon in, in Gemini, Mercury retrograde conjunct Jupiter, etc., Mercury being squared by Neptune, this can um, lead to inaccuracies or distortions or even gossip, you know, what's true and what's not is the big deal here. What is what is factually correct, what's true and what's not. So try and be very, very clear about that and don't necessarily accept what you hear or even accept what you're thinking as, as the truth. Very important theme, I think, at this, um, at this full moon. We also have, because Jupiter has just moved into um, Sagittarius, and I mentioned some of this last time, this, this feeling of, of optimism and forward motion. It's, it's, it's a wonderful, positive energy that is visionary and future-oriented, as I've just mentioned. It can always see the world in terms of bigger and better possibilities for self and, and others. You know, great enthusiasm with Jupiter. In Sagittarius. But just to mention the, the slightly um, less positive side can be um, a kind of opinionation or a dogmatism, particularly around things like belief systems and religion, which Jupiter and Sagittarius are connected to. There can be a kind of um, evangelism or even sort of religious extremism with this. It can bring in a kind of missionary zeal into, uh, into situations. So just be just be very aware of that too, that things can get a little over the top in their opinions. What's interesting as well um, in this second half is that Neptune, which has been retrograde since mid-June, is going direct at um, 13 of Pisces, and that's happening on the 25th of the month. Now, this is a, quite an important time for secrets to be revealed, things we haven't been aware of before. When Neptune moves direct, it's often a time for secrets um, to be revealed. And I think it's very interesting uh, if we look at the Sabian symbol for this full moon, one of Gemini, it is a glass bottom boat reveals undersea wonders. A glass bottom boat reveals undersea wonders that weren't visible before. Well, Neptune is lord of the sea and myth, and I think this very much reinforces this idea of secrets coming out uh, round about the end of the month in that last week that may actually be very important for certain nations as well. At this full moon, because Jupiter is so in intricately involved in the full moon, um, it's also that legal issues could come to a head for important people at this time because Jupiter and Sagittarius are also connected to the law. And remember, at this full moon, we have the Sun, Jupiter and Mercury at one end of the axis, the Moon in Gemini at the other end of the axis, all being squared, or certainly Sun, Moon and Jupiter being squared by Mars. So this crusading feeling, this campaigning, devotional, fighting for a cause feeling is continuing very much around that, around that full moon. But as I mentioned in the last video, and I've talked extensively or written extensively in my newsletter, that there's a strong sense of a new episode for humanity and the Earth at this time. The nodes have just changed signs into Cancer and Capricorn for the next 18 months. Jupiter has just changed sign. That's a 12-year 
orbit of Jupiter, moved into Sagittarius for the next year. Uranus slightly backtracked into Aries until March when it moves back fully into Taurus and stays there all the way through till 2026. And we have all of these lunations, six months of lunations, with five of them at zero degrees and um, the one in April at 29 degrees. So there's a there's a strong sense of, of pivoting, a change of energy, um, endings and beginnings. And I think that's going to be fascinating. We can see on the world stage that um, we can see a changing of the guard. For instance, Angela Merkel is retiring, is pulling back after 18 years. She's been a, a moderate and, and very much fighting for the environment. And other leaders are coming to the fore, perhaps with, with very different styles and different views. But also we have this very strong sense of Uranus square, the nodal axis, bringing in a shifting consciousness, a higher consciousness and a higher level of being. Really important for us. So if you'd like more information about my books, my very long monthly newsletter, my tutorial videos, just check out my website pamgregory.com. If you don't know where these aspects fall in your chart, uh, this full moon for instance at zero of Gemini, gives you so much more meaning if you understand which houses, which areas of life these aspects fall in your charts. If you don't know, check out this link appearing above me. That will take you to my store. You can buy a two-part tutorial video series, download a free birth chart from my website, and off you go into the, the first early steps of starting to understand the basics of astrology, which people are just really um, getting a great deal from. But in the meantime, have a wonderful second half of November and enjoy this full moon in Gemini coming up on the 22nd. Thanks for listening and bye for now.